Hi, Kevin here from the internet, as always. Welcome back to the Breakdown series, the original and longest running series of its kind on YouTube. If it's your first time watching, I highly recommend you check out the playlist of the series linked down below and it should also be clickable on the screen about now. Sometimes in Tarkov unexplainable things happen. But by looking back and reviewing your own footage, you can often find out where things go right or wrong. Look at this for example. Mosling man? What goes right and what goes wrong here? Mosling man, I come in peace. Oh my god! Well, right off the bat, we gotta praise the scav for his mastery of the levitation technique. No bobbing or weaving of any kind. Simply immaculate form. One thing that goes a bit wrong here is the squatting technique. You can tell this one is fully specked out on his flying ability and forgot to pay attention to leg day. You can see that his back arches forward on a downward movement and puts unnecessary stress on his back and neck muscles. Better would be to open up the chest a bit more and make it easier for yourself to breathe. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Brother! <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude. Let's just pretend that this, that doesn't happen. Like this is not happening. Oh no! Dude. In fact, his lack of squatting form is so distracting that I completely forget to check out the area on my right after making a buttload of noise and give away an easy death that could have been avoided if I used the scope better. But putting the blame on the scav for his squat form is not gonna help me become a better player in the future. We have to look at ourselves first and at others after. Make the world a better place. Start with yourself. Today we begin with a thing that starts off well enough but then ends up going horribly wrong. Yes, a DVD drive. Finally. Oh, 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 fuck. We're doing our thing in the resort as we hear footsteps. So we slow down. Listen. They know I'm in here. I think it's two, two dudes. Take in the environment and try to differentiate how many footsteps you hear. This helps in assessing the danger and potential strategies. I can tell it's at least two guys running and assume the worst case scenario. That being that they know I'm in the area and also in which room. West Wing 301, where I'm in right now. It has two potential spawns for Ladex, an item that's worth well over a mil, and a graphics card spawn. It is arguably the highest traffic area room in the West Wing. And this is important to know. Map knowledge is huge in Tarkov and knowing where people are likely to be and likely to go, along with the rest of the high traffic areas, will be maybe 50% of the learning curve for newer players. Me pushing? They're running? Wait, I don't think they know. Or their bait is really good. What I mean by bait is that they could pretend to be running away. To give me a false sense of security and lure me out of the room. Tarkov is a lot about mind games like this. If you can get the upper hand on your enemies by doing something like this, then definitely try it out. I'm confident to slow peek the angle past the door because the footsteps ran away and there is no way that they can sneak up to this location so fast. But this slow peek past and behind the plant is honestly a mistake on me. It's extremely risky because they could have set up shop at the end of the hallway and they will see my movement well before I can even see them. It's a straight up 50-50 gamble on if they are in the hallway or not. And I'm gambling on no, but this is based on nothing. It's pure luck and in a 50-50 situation like this, I'm way better off just slicing the angle with normal movement speed. They're still in there. They're not in the hallway and we hear them on wood on the left, so I'm guessing they're on room 306. They have to move sometime, so let's just wait for a second. 
They're below me. I can't hear me. Nate, this is my cue to move. My instinct typically is to push because many times the enemy expects you to run away from nades instead. After we dodge the nade and kill the first guy, we know that there's still a second. I'm using the 308 MDR, so with the 20 round mags, we have to get a reload in. The small mags are the worst part about this otherwise awesome gun. You could think reloading is a simple feat. Just press R and you'd be right. But in Tarkov, even the simplest of things can be the most challenging. Notice how the wall on my left gets absolutely lit up. Is this a smart position to reload? Yes or no? If you say yes, I advise you to watch the rest of the breakdown series. Start at the beginning. If no, I kindly suggest you to come over to twitch.tv slash crashed and tell me in the chat when I fuck up again like this, because I guarantee you 100% that I will again. Dang it, nice push. I fucked that up, shouldn't have reloaded there. If you're enjoying the episode so far, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I never like asking for this, but it does help me out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm and things like that. Thank you. From the one simple thing, we move on to the next. Like anything in life, keeping things simple can be one of the hardest things to do. This is especially true in Tarkov. If Tina Turner was simply the best, then I'll have to do with Hartley the best. Anyway, so we come in the three-story dorms by my new favorite entrance. Outside the back, through the window. Just like real life, map knowledge and knowing which windows are open so you can jump through is really important. One of the recent updates opened these windows, so use them to enter and exit. And it's awesome. It gives you more tools to use and be more creative in how you play and move around the maps. Awesome stuff. Dude, I would totally read that Tarkov magazine. As we move in, similar things as always. Stop. Listen. We hear footsteps. When the nade comes in from their end, I know this is gonna take a while and I wanna go for a flank immediately. You can flank, but you have to create a barrier for escape and a bit of a time window as well. The nade will suffice for that. We're not as strong in a straight up fight, so we can make use of the nades and their explosion to plot our great escape. Back out the window we go. But which way are we going? This call is important. It's based on map knowledge as well as how the current raid has been going thus far. Where has there been noise? How many PMCs are already dead at this point? How likely is it for others to be around in this area and which approach exposes us to the least amount of angles where we can get shot from? From here, in terms of a flank, we have two options. Option 1, we take a right and push towards the main entrance. Option 2, we take a left and go around the back and enter from the side. Let's go with the right side at flank first. Tarkov is a lot about disabling and enabling lines of sight. What happens if we continue on our right side at flank? Well, first up there's the two story dorms with plenty of angles that look down upon us. You have to be expecting that out of every single one of these windows, there could be a hostile ready to divide our cheeks. Especially after all the noise we just made. Every single window is blind and has a potential enemy. Then, as we walk up towards the tree story, we are exposed from a bunch of more windows and angles. People are more likely to peek these because they look out towards the two story. When you enter the three story dorms from the front playground area, notice the amount of angles that we have to deal with. Our guy and his potential teammate could be anywhere. Left, right, staircase, in the guard booth, and so on. So instead, let's rewind and go for a left flank, around the back. Under the cover of the trees with less exposure from the windows. We can pop a pane and move away from the walls a little bit, so there's less chance our enemy will hear us. The rain will also mask our steps a little bit. Let's go around. Hope the rain covers my footsteps a bit. As we come around the back and open the side door, there's only one line of sight. But our guy is still looking for us in the area we threw the nade. Hey, GG. And he just won a free single way ticket back to Lombridge. Flanking is in need of a nerf, yeah, 100%. Is this a budget kit? Ah, a little bit. The ammo is the most expensive part about my kit. 
with this guy down it's not the time now to drop your guard with the game getting more and more punishing as a solo player i've been running into squads pretty much every single raid so whenever you kill someone please restrain yourself from immediately diving on that sweet loot and clear the area first there's also that dude on the stairs quick side note that if you are a solo player and you're looking for people to hang out with and play with make sure you join our discord community it's linked down below but whatever you do in Tarkov, be it solo or as a team, remember that when you flank and shoot an enemy in the back, it's very difficult for them to shoot back at you. And from all the research and data collecting I've done, I've come to the conclusion that not getting shot massively improves your survivability. This guy, he has flea market. <laughs> you can tell this guy has a flea market, man. <laughs> yeah, boy. Mm -mm. Bully. Bully. Such bully. That, uh, I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, I don't really care about what level somebody is. I'm already happy that we actually made a kill. I'm happy we had an interesting fight uh, in the flank and, you know. Yeah, if he's a level 10 or a level 50, I don't really care. I mean, of course, it's nice to kill a level 50, but yeah. Being a high level in Tarkov doesn't, it says nothing about how good you are. It just says you played a lot. Yeah, we had PvP. It actually worked. And we lag at the guy, so I'm happy, dude. I'm just nervous in the firefight. Yes. Uh, people who hold, uh, people hold angles because they are either nervous or they are uh, scared to lose their stuff. They are scared to die. And probably a bit new to the game. And don't know the maps well enough. And also scared to make sound. It's all like it's it's really natural. And I've I've been in that place before. Where you're scared to uh, scared to move be because you uh, you're scared to make noise. I mean, in Tarkov, there's a place for uh, holding angles. There's a time and place to hold angles. Wait, what? What? But I think it's just lack of experience and uh, lack of familiarity with the, the game mechanics. For the most part, and map knowledge and all of that, that sort of stuff. All that jazz, as they say. Uh, is he dead? Yeah, he's dead now. What was the flashbang about? Was that like a, a final stand? Martyrdom. <laughs> it's not gonna fit. It's not gonna fit. But if we do this, there you go. Don't need the contact. Well, you can also get the contacts. Hell yeah. This is uh, 28 years of uh, Tetris uh, training every single day, chat. Every single day. Every day is Tetris day. Unless you go to the gym, then every day is upper body day. Right? But the, I mean, if you're a Tetris champion, why bother going to the jail? Or the jail. The gym. <laughs> Skip lag day. Yeah, every day is upper body day, dude. Every single day. You need strong lags against lag matter? Mm, yeah, fair. Fair, but... 
Bear, yeah. On the middle. Who cares about lag, man? If you have big biceps, right? Hey, Oscar Mikey, what's up? Smaller legs or smaller targets? That's true. That is definitely true. Turns out, after we extracted from this raid, that we did kill his body on the stairs with the nade we tossed. But I went completely pepega and never thought about checking him. But we did have a successful raid. Knowing when to get out and not to get greedy is a big part of this game and it frequently messes me up. I stick around too long and get too greedy before I get clapped by either a squad or a player scav. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and stuff. You know, it really helps my channel out. We're also gonna be live on Twitch in a few hours from this episode airing. We're live six days a week over on twitch.tv slash crashed. Hope to see you there. Have a good one and see you in the next. Bye.